It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. This is part two of my conversation with Max Blumenthal, best-selling author, journalist, senior editor of Alternate's Gray Zone Project, co-host of the new podcast, Moderate Rebels. In this interview, we're talking about the latest on Russiagate. But let's go to um, the issue of RT and Sputnik. Uh, these Russian-owned, state-owned media outlets have been under pressure in the U.S. Uh, both have been asked to register as foreign agents or have been uh, investigated uh, along those lines as suspected foreign agents recently. And just this week, uh, three members of Congress sent uh, the chair of the SEC, Ajit Pai, a letter asking him to investigate Sputnik Radio. Uh, and this is what they write. Um, Sputnik, a uh, radio network funded by the Russian government, was used as part of the Kremlin's effort to influence the 2016 presidential election. In Washington, D.C., listeners can tune their radios to 105.5 FM to hear Sputnik and the Russian government's effort to spread misinformation to influence U.S. policy and undermine our elections. This means the Kremlin's propaganda is being broadcast over a license granted by the FCC, and the Russian government may be using our country's own airwaves to undermine our democracy. Unquote. Max, as we wrap, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's one of the most embarrassing letters I've ever seen from a member of Congress um, because, well, may maybe not. I mean, there's, there's, there's so much garbage tumbling out of Capitol Hill, but this letter refers to Sputnik Radio broadcasting on 105.5 FM, and I urge everyone to listen to it. It's one of the, actually one of the best stations in the city right now. I was just on my friend Eugene Perrier's show yesterday. Eugene Perrier is, uh, you know, a social justice activist in Washington. He was a candidate for city council. He's his finger on the pulse of the city, and he's one of the best analysts of geopolitical affairs that I know. So it's a, it's a just an excellent show. And, you know, we were joking about this letter because Sputnik came on DC radio this July. That's nine months after the election was decided, you idiots. I mean, have they even been confronted by the by any American reporter about how idiotic their claim is? That unless that unless Putin, Putin has some kind of time machine, it's simply impossible for Sputnik to have influenced anyone around the election through uh, 105.5 FM. Beyond that, when I was on Eugene's show, and you know we had a great conversation about Trump's UN speech. Uh, none of us are very friendly to Trump, so I don't know where the collusion is there. But, uh, you know, we, we took calls. And there weren't that many calls coming in because not that many people were listening to 105.5. There isn't much advertising for Sputnik in DC. Not many Washingtonians know about it. I can tell you that hundreds of thousands of people in the DC area are being influenced by disinformation by figures like Rush Limbaugh and racist white supremacists like Michael Savage, um, who are spreading conspiracies about creeping Sharia. Um, these are figures who actually influenced the election. And I don't know why the Democrats aren't going after them anymore. I remember, you know, I'm old enough to remember, I might, you know, look really young and everything um, uh, or not. I don't know. You can't really see like my receding hairline from this uh, angle. But I'm old enough to remember when the Democrats actually attacked right-wing radio and didn't attack um, these uh, fairly marginal Russian stations. The reason I think they're doing it is because it's provided a platform to people like me and people like Eugene Perrier. Um, and it's, this is about the hardening and radicalization of the center and about uh, figures from a political establishment whose worldview has been discredited, who simply need a scapegoat. Now, for the neocons we talked about before, um, there, are, there are other reasons why they're pushing the Russia, the Russia interference narrative. They genuinely would like, I believe, they would like a hot war with Russia, or at least with Russian proxies. Um, but for the Democrats in Washington, it's just a convenient scapegoat that helps them reinforce a discredited worldview. Um, it's not only sad, it's deeply dangerous because it feeds into the neoconservative long-term agenda, which will get, could get millions of people killed. Hmm. Yeah, you know, Max, on Sputnik, um, my thoughts on it, on it are that, you know, it is obviously an arm of Russian state power, so you don't hear much criticism, or at least I haven't heard criticism of Russian government policies. But otherwise, uh, I've, turned, I've learned a lot from its shows, including 
Eugene's show and also uh, Loud and Clear with Brian, uh, Brian, Brian Becker. Becker's, Brian Becker's show is one of the best public affairs programs that I know of, and also John White, um, who is, I believe he's Scottish, um, and is you know a kind of working class leftist in the UK who's actually um, pro EU, and he does great shows on geo on geopolitics. Yeah, and and all these shows we've mentioned are, as you said, totally anti-Trump. So the idea that they're working on the Russian government's behalf is, is pretty laughable. As is the idea that, as you said, they could have some influence. There is, I think, one alt-right Breitbart guy who has a show, but. Yeah, uh, well, he has a show, and he, you know, they deliberately paired him up with a Bernie Sanders supporter, hmm. and that's never mentioned in any coverage of Sputnik. So, I mean, this this also speaks to the, you know, the, the zeal and bias of reporters like Michael Isakoff, who has been, you know, heavily involved with Ukrainian nationalist elements in Washington and was during the campaign. Um, but if you look at Michael Isakoff's coverage of Sputnik and the supposed FBI investigation, I don't even know if there is one. Um, he only mentions Lee Stranahan, who came out of Breitbart, and doesn't mention um, that his co-host is a Bernie Sanders supporter, and that the vast, the rest of the um, Sputnik hosts who broadcast in Washington are left wing. And Max, speaking of the left wing, where has the left wing media been on this? I mean, uh, you've spoken out about uh, RT and Sputnik being targeted. Uh, we did one segment here on the Real News with the uh, journalist. Alona Minkowski, uh, I believe Trevor Tim uh, of the Freedom of the Press Foundation said something. Otherwise, I've seen a lot of silence from this investigating of uh, RT and Sputnik as foreign agents and this letter to the SEC calling for them to be investigated there, too. I'd, I'd also give Glenn Greenwald and Michael Tracy a lot of credit for challenging. and. and Mark Ames and Yasha Levine, who are two journalists who really know Russia because they lived there, they were actually cast out um, by Putin during a crackdown on independent media. So they don't, they're not really inclined to be Putinites, um, but they understand how insane the whole narrative is and how it's based on a series of falsehoods and manufactured threats that all are tr you know, trending towards a new Cold War. Why do other journalists, uh, why have they been silent? There's self-censorship, the fear of being attacked. I've been attacked mercilessly for speaking out and you know, actually challenging some of the disinformation. Um, and so have these other journalists. Um, beyond that, you know, if you don't know a lot about, if you primarily cover domestic politics and you, you, know, you haven't done field reporting from another country, you don't know a lot about geopolitics and international relations, foreign policy and how it works. Um, this is, you know, some, something where you're, this is an area where you're going to defer to the fake Russia experts. And then beyond that, there is such um, a hatred of Trump, I think justifiably, that it's just kind of fun to embarrass him on the Russia issue and, you know, the PP tape and all that. I saw George Takai, this Star Trek actor, um, claiming on Twitter that um, the U.S., working with Russia to surveil an ISIS convoy of women and children um, who were being evacuated from previously controlled ISIS territory to ISIS territory in exchange for Lebanese soldiers in a deal with Hezbollah. This is a very complex deal in Syria that was carried out, which was really important to both sides and human lives were at stake. Um, it was reported in The Hill, which has you know, become kind of a tabloid, that Russia had taken over the surveillance of the convoy. This is just US-Russia deconfliction. They're working together in Syria against ISIS. And George Takai goes on Twitter and says, uh, Trump is, you know, this is more proof that you know Trump is controlled by Russia in so many words. And it was he was retweeted by 5,000 people. Um, you know, the parochialism and kind of the, the parochialism and ignorance of resistance liberals is so clearly pronounced around the Russia issue that they can kind of be duped into believing anything. And so that's another problem. And I think that's that helps explain um, the culture of Beltway reporters who really um, know next to nothing about Russia or about how American foreign policy works. Max Blumenthal, best-selling author, journalist, senior editor of Alternate's Gray Zone Project, co-host of the new podcast, Moderate Rebels. Max, thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.